Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about foundlings and what a foundling is, it's just it's basically an orphan, uh, an, inf uh, an infant that has been abandoned by its parents and taken care for by others. Now this, the inspiration for this video uh, came from watching uh, another epic vlog from uh, Martin Liedke, Flat Earth British himself, and he does a, obviously a lot of good work. And this one is no different. This really stuck out to me, this particular video, because during his video, he talks about um, these workhouses in Victorian Britain. And uh, this really stuck out to me because a couple months ago, somebody brought to my attention this concept of um, orphan trains and uh, orphan trains and these were trains that ran in New York City from New York City to rural areas with all these kids and it's in this same kind of time frame so at, at the time I didn't really know what to do with the information but um, thank you uh, Mr. Liedke for bringing this up the fact that uh, London had the similar issues here because now I could kind of see the bigger picture. So uh, let's start talking about some of this stuff here. So next what I'd like to do is talk about uh, these foundlings in Victorian England. And I found a nice little article here talking about the Victorian women forced to give up their babies. Most unmarried mothers 150 years ago. Uh, this article is from 2015, so that puts us... Um, 1865 range most unmarried mothers 150 years ago had to hand over their babies to these foundling hospitals uh, there's a new exhibition that looks at what became of these women which in the middle of the 19th century took in and raised the babies of fallen women uh, unmarried women who became pregnant they had limited choices so they had to, they ended up giving up their babies to these uh, foundling hospitals and asylums. Throughout the 19th century, about 4,500 women handed over their children at this hospital alone. And apparently it's a museum, now a museum, okay? But I just wanted to scroll down here. What happened next to the mothers who were successful in getting the hospital to take their babies? is the hardest thing of all to discover. They melted out of the picture. They were not encouraged to visit their children or try to keep up any kind of relationship with them. So there's this kind of breaking off with the parents uh, of the thousands of women who deposited their children at the during the 19th century. Only two ever seemed to have been in a position to claim them back. So we're just we're talking about just children with no connection to their parents. And this whole concept of women who uh, were fallen women, I think this is actually a cover story to account for all these kids. Why are they why are all these kids in these institutions? So this lady, uh, Julie Miller, she wrote a book called uh, Abandoned Foundlings in 19th Century New York and just a short description of her book in the 19th century foundlings children abandoned by their desperately poor typically unmarried mothers again uh, usually short usually shortly after birth now in place in European society there were asylums in every major city to house abandoned babies by the eve of the civil war so 1865 new york city in particular had an epidemic of foundlings on its hands due to the rapid and often interlinked phenomena of urban development population growth immigration and mass poverty only then did the city's leaders begin to worry about the welfare and future of its abandoned children so again this isn't an issue 
until like 1865. They're realizing, oh man, we have all these kids. What are we going to do? So you have all this infrastructure. Everything's, you know, all this infrastructure, all these buildings. But all of a sudden in 1865, um, all these foundlings, all these abandoned children, it's a, all of a sudden it's an issue. And again, I think this is all a cover story to account for why you have all these kids all being introduced into these cities. So I'm just going to play a little clip here. Yeah, she's doing a, a reading of a section of her book. Are all foundlings? I had no idea that foundlings were once a reality in the United States, but they were. And in the 19th century, the American city that had the largest number of foundlings was New York. Over the course of the 19th century, the number grew. In 1796, the almshouse, which was the poorhouse, counted a total of 12 what they called orphans and foundlings combined. By the 1840s, the almshouse was starting to note in their reports that the number of foundlings was numerous, and they were worrying that the number was growing. Um, after the Civil War, you may be surprised to learn that there were four foundling asylums in New York City. By the first half of the 1880s, these, these asylums were collect collectively gathering an annual average of over 2,000 infants. And I should be clear, these were infants that were both gathered on the street and also born in the asylum. In other words, one of the purposes of the asylum was to give women a place to give birth to their children who they might otherwise have abandoned. This led me to wonder where this epidemic of foundlings came from, what foundlings' lives were like, and why the epidemic, su su epidemic subsided, so that today we hardly remember that it ever existed. In other words, this is an enormous building. It's gone, and we have forgotten that it was ever there or its inmates were ever there. So she's just pointing out the fact that this problem reaches uh, the highest levels in the mid-1860s. So um, let's take a look at, this is one of the first um, uh, foundling uh, houses, and um, or asylum, sorry. And you could tell it's got the stairways going up to this floor. Looks like a mud flood type building. And, um, yeah, so I just wanted to point that out. But there, I believe there was four of these uh, asylums in uh, New York City, foundling asylums. So let's take a look at what the heck were <clears throat> the orphan trains. All these kids, eh? The orphan trains were a series of social service programs that relocated poor and homeless city children from 1854 to 1929, more than 200,000 children traveled by train from East Coast to seek new homes in nearly every state in the continental U.S. So I'm starting to think this isn't just some random event. This is just introducing all these kids into the new world, so to speak. And the timing, again, it's just really interesting to me because you have all the photos of these empty cities in the 1850s. So it's very interesting timing. Uh, but scrolling down here, many of the children who rode the orphan trains came from these city orphanages. The trains stopped at towns where people were waiting to see like the children. A train's arrival would be advertised posters, notices in the newspaper. At each stop, the orphan train riders were lined up at the train depot or other public area while people looked them over. Boys and girls were often inspected closely to see if they were healthy and suited for hard work. So they were just paraded all over the United States, these children. And these immigrants are coming from a lot of different places into New York. New York was like a hub and they're coming from Italy, and they're coming from uh, the Irish as well, obviously. Those are two of the bigger ones. Uh, but what's interesting, you also have this concept of home children. This was a child migration scheme founded by this person in 1869, under which more than 100,000 children were sent from the UK to Australia, Canada, England, and South Africa. So all these commonwealth countries here. So, so you've got 
massive amounts of children children being sent to uh, the United States and then from New York being sent all over the place. You have um, all these kids from the yeah, from the United Kingdom, they're being sent to shipped out to all these other places. And uh, again, just real interest. And again, in the, in this time frame. And what I just like to do now is just point out there was this uh, Irish famine, orphans in Canada. Thousands of children became orphans during the eighteen forty seven Irish famine migration to Canada. It was it used to be called British North America. Yeah, so you had in the late 80, 1840s, there was a, a major wave of immigration to what is now Canada. Uh, nearly 90,000 of these immigrants landed at Gross Eel. Children of the famine, the num number of children of child migrants who became orphaned in 1847 was unprecedented. Uh, gross ill usually dealt with around 10 orphans per year, but there were over 100 in less than a month into 1847. By the year's end, thousands of children had become orphans. The exact number is hard to determine given that many were informally placed out and left no trace in the record. Approximately nine out of every ten orphans were Catholic. So you had all these orphans and there was no record of them. They, they couldn't be traced. And I think this whole thing is a cover story to account for a bunch of kids showing up. Now let's take a look at abandoned children of Imperial Russia. Um, they established a couple of foundling homes in Moscow and St. Petersburg. And what I'd like to show you now is how it's not to the late 1800s where things really escalate. To give a clear idea, by the 1880s, the Moscow home alone was receiving between 16 and 18,000 infants annually and sending over 10,000 of these each year to outlying district villages for care. So it reaches a fever pitch in the 1880s in the Moscow foundling home. In 1882, there were all told 41,000 foundlings from the Moscow home living with 32,000 foster families scattered throughout 4,000 plus villages. So they're just like the United States, they're being, you know, deposited in these foundling homes in the major cities in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and they're being uh, distributed to the rural areas. And what I'd like to mention here is that with respect, this is an interesting component, with respect to the delivery of the children to the foundling home, while they often arrived individually in the arms of mothers or midwives, there were also whole cartloads regularly trucked in by women known as commissionerki, did unwanted children in the villages and district towns, cared for them temporarily, and then when enough had been gathered to make the journey profitable, they packed the infants into a wagon and hauled them to the metropolitan foundling home. So <laughs> these children supposedly are, are being packed up in the villages and sent to these foundling homes in the big city and then from there redistributed to the villages. So that's kind of an interesting situation going on there. And I just wanted to bring up this point. By the end of the 19th century, the traffic had developed to the point that children were coming into the metropolitan homes not only from the capital cities and their surrounding provinces, they were being sent in from shelters as far away as the Black Sea, the Volga Basin, and even the Ural Mountains. Children were in from all over the country 
were processed and then streamed out to fill the villages of central Russia. So the same thing that's going on in Europe and uh, in the United States, it's happening in Russia. And now let's take a look at Italy. Infant abandonment in Italy. Throughout Catholic Europe, infants were being abandoned in huge numbers in the 19th century, deposited at foundling homes established for their care. In France in the 1830s, about 32,000 infants were abandoned per year. In Spain and Portugal at this time, about 15,000 each. In 1887, over 20,000 babies were left at the foundling homes in St. Petersburg and Moscow alone. By the middle of the century, the number of infants left at Italy's foundling homes exceeded 35,000 per year. At the time, Italy had over 1,200 approved places at which newborns could be left. Why are there so many places for newborns to be left? in the middle of the 1800s what like what's going on uh, let me just want to show you one more page here indeed in Milan in Milan Naples and Florence the three largest centers about 374,000 infants were abandoned in the first 60 years of the century Milan and Florence were exceptional as many as 35 to 43 percent of all babies born there were left at the foundling homes in the mid 19th century. Same time frame, 35 to 43 percent of all babies born there were left at the foundling homes. Man, that is unbelievable. Uh, in the uh, Italian foundling homes, they they didn't even they just had to make up last names, and in a lot of time cases, those last names stuck with these children for the rest of their lives. Uh, with the foundlings, both the given and the surname had to be assigned. Both, of course, were made up. Uh, um, okay, surnames... Uh, da, 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 da. So they were made up. Um, Esposito means exposed to the wheel. Travato found rotil of the wheel. Other times, chosen surnames refer to the location where the child was found, like Gradini or Del Rio of the river. Sometimes the surname referred to the fortune or to the will of God, as in Salvato, uh, Fortuna, Luck, Urbino, Blind. Fa foundling surname eventually became the person's official name. So you can imagine this makes it even tougher to to uh, determine the gene genealogy uh, of these children and it's like it's obscured right and I think that's by design I really do and uh, even Vienna the Vienna foundlings and orphans home between the revolution of 1848 and 1868 around 30 percent of all children born in Vienna went into the Vienna foundlings home again mid 1800s 30 30%? Unbelievable. And yeah, just and just going back to the the uh, children in the United States, uh, they were all put to work. You had children um, handing out newspapers, you had children working the mines, working cotton mills in the southern states and uh, factories of course home workshops they're working the farms so i think that they needed these kids to work because they there was all this infrastructure and they just didn't have enough manpower so they had to put these kids who came from wherever they had to put these kids to work so you know i think i'll leave it here but the picture that I'm trying to paint is that you have this phenomenon of all these orphan kids just being dumped off at these um, these foundling homes, orphanages, basically for children, and from from there they're being shipped to like uh, rural areas 
and uh, it's kids are just being moved all around the world in this at this time. They're being shipped from Britain and all over. So just a weird phenomena. So I think this kind of concept that I think we got reintroduced into these cities in the 1800s. Like there were people around for sure, early 1800s, but in the 1850s and 60s, that's when things ramp up, I believe. Uh, I don't believe the official history. And I think that there was a previous civilization and it got uh, cataclysms. They were mostly destroyed, but some of their cities survived and we moved back into their cities. And I think this whole phenomena of these foundlings is a cover story to account for all these children being reintroduced to the to these cities and they're being just from the major hubs in these cities they're being deployed to the rural areas and it's well, it's an interesting rabbit hole for sure but i guess i'll leave it here for now but uh until next time take care bye